Hey, Abby, where are you going for a summer vacation? Well, I'm going to Tokyo, Syria, and Antarctica. Wow. What about you? I'm going to Iran and Drew Hastrana, and I'm hopping in a time machine back to 1940s New York City. Girl, you're going to get a lot of miles for that. Yeah, well. Hi, readers. Welcome back to another episode of Six Picks. I'm Jess. And I'm Abby. And today, we're going to be talking to you about some of our favorite transportive reads. These books will take you places. My first pick is Darius the Great is Not Okay by Adib Karam. I don't even know where to really start with this book because I loved it so much. Darius, the protagonist, or Darius, is half white and half Persian living in America. He feels like he can't fit in with those around him and struggles with his identity. And then he goes to Iran for the first time and everything changes. He discovers so much about himself and he learns that home can mean so many things. This YA story is really beautiful and it will have you dreaming of Iran with every page. My first pick is The White Darkness by David Gran. David Gran wrote Killers of the Flower Moon, which was one of my favorite books from last year. And this book is such a beautiful follow-up. It's a true story that follows Henry Worsley, who's just a regular father, husband, living in Britain, but he is obsessed with Ernest Shackleton. Now, if you don't know, Ernest Shackleton was the 19th century explorer that tried to make it across Antarctica with his crew. He was one of the best leaders in modern history. And Henry Worsley sets out with two other descendants of Shackleton's crew to follow in Shackleton's footsteps. And when they're done, he still hasn't wet his appetite for Antarctica. And so he goes back and attempts to cross Antarctica alone. This book will absolutely transport you to the icy tundra of Antarctica, and it's chock full of pictures, so you'll really feel like you're there. My second pick is Gingerbread by Helen Oyeyemi. When Perdita Lee wants to learn more about her mother's upbringing in the seemingly non-existent land called Juhastrana, she takes it upon herself to dive deep into her family's weird history. And what she finds is more than she ever expected. On this journey, she learns of her mother's childhood best friend named Gretel, who loves gingerbread and is extremely mischievous. Sound familiar? This book is perfect for anyone who wants to be transported to a magical fairy tale land that's full of weird creatures and things. My second pick is A Tale for the Time Being by Ruth Ozeki. When a Hello Kitty lunchbox washes up on the shores of a Pacific Northwest island, Ruth finds it, opens it, and inside finds the diary of a 16-year-old girl in Japan named Now. Now is being bullied and has decided to end her life. But first, she wants to relay the story of her 104-year-old grandmother in the pages of this diary. And Now sets out this dual narrative. We've got Ruth's story on one hand and Now's story on the other. And through the elastic fabric of time and space, these narratives become intertwined. My third pick is City of Girls by Elizabeth Gilbert. This book will transport you to 1940s New York City. It's super cool. Uh, Vivian Morris, the protagonist of this novel, is kicked out of college because of her bad grades and sent to live with her aunt in Manhattan. Now her aunt owns this really funky midtown theater and Vivian quickly finds herself immersed in this world of showgirls and actors and actresses and she has the time of her life. Eventually she does make a mistake that takes her years to understand and as she looks back and tells her story she remarks on female sexuality and the power that it gives 
and of course, love. My third pick is The Beekeeper of Aleppo by Christy Leftieri. This book will take you to Syria in the time before the war, when Nuri and his wife Afra are living a simple existence. He's a beekeeper, she's an artist, they are so in love, but then war breaks out and the two have to leave in order to survive. Nuri has to leave his bees, but the only thing sustaining him is his cousin Mustafa, living in Yorkshire in England, who's also a beekeeper. So the two of them make their way as refugees to the UK and try to seek out an existence there. This book is so moving. It looks at the Syrian refugee crisis in human terms. You get to know this couple and their struggles and you will feel their exodus right along with them. We guarantee that these books will take you back through time and all around the globe. We hope that you'll pick them up, fly through them, and remember, they're cheaper than a plane ticket. And there you have it, readers. If you think we missed a book, let us know in the comments or tweet at us at Read It Forward. And for even more great book recommendations sent straight to your inbox, sign up for our weekly newsletter at readitforward.com slash subscribe.